boys, we are back, and it's time to continue year one with our Ottawa Senators. We started up the season simulation in the last video. Uh, not the greatest start, but you know what? It's still very early. It's not time to hit that panic button just yet. 4-5-1 and one to start off the year one simulation for Ottawa. And at the end of the last video, I uh, put up a vote at the website saying, what do we need? Do we need a top six forward, a uh, bottom six forward, top two defenseman, or a top four defenseman? You guys were saying I should go out and get a top six forward. And if we're going to get a top six forward, it looks like Clark MacArthur is the odd man out because we're not trading away Kyle Turris, Bobby Ryan, Mark Stone, Zabinijad, or Hoffman, right? These five guys are staying in the top six. So looks like MacArthur is the guy who's got to be uh, heading out of here. But you know what? After that game against the New York Rangers, when he got the second goal of the game, maybe Clark MacArthur is a, a big piece of the chemistry here in Ottawa, right? I know there's probably a lot of Senator fans out there that don't want to see Clark MacArthur traded just yet. If he was on the third line, that'd be an amazing third line, but that's it's almost overkill to keep him and to acquire an even better first line left wing when we have holes on defense, our goaltenders are still growing, right? So... And, 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 I mean, I'm not going to go out and get a veteran like Patrick Marlowe for the first line left wing. Why would I do that? You know what I mean? I want to make the playoffs year one, but I don't want to sacrifice our future. And there's no other team that's going to trade away a 27, 28-year-old left winger that's a stud to us right now this earlier on in the season, right? So it's either Clark MacArthur or we trade him away. And I don't think I want to trade away Clark MacArthur just yet. It's too, it's too early on in the season. The goaltenders, Anderson seems to be the guy who's got to be traded here, okay? So uh, we'll see about the top six forward. But before we go any farther, I have some comments that I want to read through here. First up, trade Anderson while his value is where it is. See, this guy understands. He's not getting any better. And now that you have Hammond and Laner playing well for the future, there's no need for an older goaltender. They may not lead you they may not lead you into the playoffs for the first year, but it's a better long-term move. Oh, I see. Laner and Hammond. You might be able to snag a second-round pick with a top-four defenseman. Really stretching it. It could happen in that trade. Second-round picks are good in this game. They may not turn out to be studs, but they really become good players. All right, so this guy's saying to just trade away Anderson for a high draft pick. May not help us out for this year, but it will come back to help us out two, three, four, five years down the line. Makes sense. I do want to make the playoffs year one, though, so the perfect trade would be to, would be to get Anderson out of here for somebody who's in his mid to late 20s who can help us now but also be on our team for the next five years along with uh, Turris and Bobby Ryan right so draft picks I don't know if I'm at a draft pick stage just yet next comment San Jose needs goaltending ah that could be a perfect destination for Anderson Niemi isn't really cutting it anymore plus you need a top four defenseman you could package Anderson plus a second for Vlasic 88 overall 27 year old, eight years old again yes that's perfect but how likely would it be for San Jose to trade away Vlasic it would have to be something very special he has good passing and defensive stats along with good poise to lead the younger defenseman down the stretch and into the playoffs I think he'd play well next to Carlson hell yeah he would that would be a filthy combo I don't think it's going to happen happen though also you could find a way to throw in maybe Phillips and MacArthur and a third to bring Marlowe to play on that top line sure he's old but he, he'd be able to he'd be able to play until Hoffman Stone were skilled enough to handle to handle the top line you do make sense but I don't know man Marlowe and uh Vlasic's trade value I think is way too high hang on a second let me just go there quickly San Jose, all right, so Patrick Marlowe let's see so they do want to give him away but it, it's halfway up there I mean you're talking about like a Clark MacArthur and like a second round pick. And I'm not at a stage yet where like we're too early into this. I don't even think that would go through. You'd still maybe need a third in there or something, right? But I, I, I just don't see that happening right now. We're not far enough into this GM mode to start trading away for veterans. I did that with the Arizona Coyotes when I went out and got like guys like Corey Perry and, uh, and uh, Chris Letang. But that's when we knew we were a Stanley Cup contender and we had plenty of prospects. We are at the beginning of our uh, of our uh, dyn or not dynasty, our tenure here as the general manager of Ottawa, I got to see what I have. And one thing that we need is prospects. We don't have any prospects. All of our prospects are playing right now, right? So I don't think Marlowe's going to work out. And Vlasic again, he's he's got the white uh, the white potential. So they don't even want to give him up. No way, I'm getting Vlasic. So that's not going to happen. Thank you very much, though. Next comments. Hang on a second here. Oh, geez, I'm not going to be able to read this one. It's so small. Trade for Alex Galchenyuk. You may have to give up a solid prospect and a pick, but he goes up to a 94. So in his fourth season, he's like Yakupov, but much better. Kyle Turris won't progress much more. He can step into Turris' uh, shoes in the in a season or two and become the new number one centerman. What do you think? You've never tried him, and I think you should. Likes of Johnny C's. Well, again, going back to that argument, why it, why would the Montreal Canadiens? trade away Alex Galchenyuk at this point in the season. 
The guy, unless it's like Crosby or Malkin going back, right? And again, why would they trade him to a divisional opponent? Who do we have to acquire uh, uh, Alex Galchenyuk? I mean, I know I can manipulate the game and trade away a bunch of first-round picks and Craig Anderson, you know, but even though they still have Carey Price, no, nah, that wouldn't work. Alex Galchenyuk would not work, all right? But that's the right idea, a young player like that to fill in now and for the future. That's what I'm looking for. Next comment, Johnny, I think you should trade David Legwand, move Zach Smith to the fourth line, and move Lazar to the third line center, and try to pick up a two-way forward for the third line right wing spot. That's actually a really good idea, um, because the depth, I don't think we are going to be able to change, not the depth, sorry, the top six, I don't think we're going to be able to change right now. I don't want to trade, make a, a massive trade where I end up regretting it later, but fixing the bottom six is definitely something we can do. So going back to that uh, Craig Anderson um, idea about trading him to San Jose. I've already done a pre-scouting trade here, right? So this does make sense. Now, Anderson is injured, but he's only injured till November 6th, with a, I think is less than a week. So he's fine. San Jose would take him on. Now, I wouldn't trade for Niemi. I wouldn't trade for Staylock because we already have Hammond and Laner, right? So these guys are our goaltender. So the good news is I don't need a goaltender back, and they only have five goalies. So they can accept him without any problem, all right? And it makes sense. One year left for Niemi. Uh, so Anderson's got, what, how many years left? Four years left at 4.2. Yeah, that makes sense for San Jose. This actually might turn them into a good team year one. Now, what I want to do is I want to make our team better. First of all, defensively, we're not going to get Vlasic. We're not going to get Burns. Mirko Mueller is only 76 overall, 19 years old. But I had my eyes on Justin Braun. 84 overall, 27 years old. He's got a little bit of a steep contract, but we have cap space. Six years, which means that we have him locked up. And he can be a part of the Bobby Ryan, Kyle Turris uh, uh, era in Ottawa, basically, right? Now, if you look at his individual stats, the reason I'm picking him up was because in the last video, we saw that our penalty kill was not doing that good. Defensive awareness, 87. Shot blocking, 88. Stick checking, 88. Physical category is good. And for a defensive defenseman, his offensive categories are good as well. His discipline is at 90. His poise is at 80. His passing is at 84. Puck control at 84. So he's not a liability. Um, I think for the first part of his career, he'd be a top four. And then maybe as he gets into his 30s, Later on in his contract, he can move into a top six, but he would be a first-line penalty killer, all right? Now, if we're going to trade for Justin Braun, we got to get rid of one of our top six defensemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, all right? Uh, yeah, that's six. So they don't want Chris Phillips. I was thinking about trading away Chris Phillips, but you know what? This guy, he's been a lifelong Ottawa senator, drafted first in 1996 by Ottawa, um, and he's got pretty good defensive stats as well. So this guy could be a penalty killer alongside of Braun. Alongside of, um, who else? Uh, not Weircock, uh, Mathot. He's another defensive defenseman. So the guy who falls out, and he's got pretty good stats, the guy who falls out is Jared Cowan, all right? So I'm going to put him in the trade. I'll show you guys why I'm putting uh, Jared Cowan in here. Take a look at his stats. He's another defensive defenseman. We have too many defensive defensemen on this team, and he's 23. Braun is 27. I'd say Cowan doesn't get above 84, right? Um, his body checking is a little good, but that discipline at 68, I don't like that. And also, bronze passing and puck control and poise and offensive awareness was a little bit better, right? So, if we're going to get something good here, we have to give up something. So, Jared Cowan, and that would make it so we still have six defensemen. Now, hang on a second. They're getting a lot. Don't worry. I'm getting more back on this trade here, boys. And this is going to solve our bottom six problem, all right? Tommy Wingles. There it is. 84. Picking up 284 overall players here. An 84 overall two-way forward. Um, he can also be another penalty killer. Face-off 75. Defense awareness 85 is down the, uh, the list there. His offensive categories are 85. So... I'm thinking this guy could be my third line center. Zach Smith could be my fourth line center. And then Leguan can be used because he's a two-way forward with some speed. You can put him on the wing. Same thing with a Curtis Lazar. We can go another month or two and see what the simulation brings us, right? I don't want to make too many trades right now. So I'll throw in a Tommy Wingles right there. Now, here's the genius of this trade. Anderson... We don't need to get a goalie back. Cowan, we're getting a defenseman back. We're bringing in a center. Well, then which one of our roster players is not uh, going to play for us? Well, I'm going to send back McCallick because he's a sniper on the uh, he's a sniper on the third line, but we're not using him really because snipers I want in the top six. I don't want this guy for defense. He's got a plus rating already, but I figure if I put uh, defensive players in the bottom six with our talented top six, that will help us out. McCallick on the third line is kind of... Uh, out of the uh, out of the ordinary right here, and McCallick actually they want him, so it's it's 
Yeah, it works out. Let me just see this trade with the trade value. Wingles, Braun, Anderson, Cowan, and McCallick. Hell yeah, I like the way that trade looks. All right, so Cowan upgrading to Braun, McCallick upgrading to Wingles, and we're giving them Anderson to get the upgrade. So I'm trying to make this trade realistic, boys. San Jose Sharks, they're getting a goaltender. They're getting a defenseman to replace their defenseman, and they're getting a winger because they have so many centers on that team with Joe Pavelski, uh, Hurdle, Logan Couture. So they get a winger who can snipe along side of those guys okay so let me just see will this go through i don't even think this will go through i think i might have to add another player on there but i'll try it out anderson cow and mccallick for braun and wingles will it go through yes it did on behalf of the san jose sharks organization i accept your trade offer we'll see you out on the ice so there you go boys i'm making our team better for year number one Made the trade. Now, you guys go nuts in the comments and on the website. Was that a good trade for Ottawa or a bad trade? The hardest part of that puzzle was getting uh, Jared Cowan out of there. All right, but I'm putting a lot of faith in Braun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, Griba, that's fine. And then forwards, Condra. You can bring up Condra as a debt player. There you go. All right, so let me go ahead and edit the new lines. I won't waste your time with this. Hang on. Okay, so I went ahead and edited the lines. I went with Stone on the first line with Turris and Bobby Ryan. I want Stone to uh, get the chance on the first line. MacArthur was Benjad and Hoffman. Third line, Legwand, Wingles, and Lazar. All right, so Legwand's going to play the wing because he does have some good speed on him. He's got... I wouldn't say decent offensive categories. He's the next guy to trade if we need a third-line winger, all right? And uh, Shason Smith and uh, Chris Neal down there. We also have Colin Greening and Eric Condra and Eric Griba who are scratched. So if we're lose, starting to lose some games, maybe I scratch uh, Chris Neal and Shason and get Greening and... Uh, Condra in there because they have decent defensive stats as well. Weird Koch, I decided to put him on the first line with Carlson, Mathot, and Justin Braun. So there's the defensive line, and then Phillips and uh, Cody Cece. All right, so hopefully our offense can score with the first line with Carlson and Bobby Ryan and Kyle Turris, and then the second line comes out, they shut her down a little bit, help out our goaltenders. All right, there's the power play. Kept it the same. Well, actually, I think Stone's up on the uh, power play. Penalty kill now. Zach Smith and Tommy Wingles, much better down the middle. Legwan and Curtis Lazar, no Chris Neal. And look at the first line penalty kill now uh, for the defense. Mathot and Justin Braun. There you go. That's going to make a big difference, hopefully, for our penalty kill. So we'll keep an eye on the penalty kill numbers. I'll show you guys them quickly, actually, before we start the simulation. And Robin Lander in the net. All right, so we're not going to do the slow simulation in this video. We've already gone pretty far. Let's get one more month of simulating done, see how our team plays, and then... I'm not ready to go on the long simulation just yet because I want to I wanna make the playoffs year one. So if changes need to be made, i got to make them early. So hang on a second here. Player stats... Let's see the team standing just so we can uh, follow our penalty kill percentage because that was the real slow one right now. Okay, so 76.5%, 24th in the NHL, 76.5. Let's see if our penalty kill can get a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a month here. I'm going to go through some fan art while we're doing it. And don't worry, I'll make sure not to... Uh, I'll be sure not to cover up... The, uh, hang on a sec, I'm just doing this stuff. Alright, I'll be sure not to cover up the, um, the simulation so you guys can still see it. I'll just put it in the message boards, alright? So first up, when the candy goes sour, the hamburg and the hamburglar has no cheese, leave it to Robin Stellar Laner. Alright, very nice, Robin Laner. He's looking to make his mark as the starting goaltender here in Ottawa. I'm looking forward to it, Robin Laner. Oh, Darth, <laughs> Darth Vader's back. All right. Contact Milan Lucic, GM Superman. He is already one with the dark side. We must grow stronger. Do not disappoint us, Superman. All right. Oh, Jesus. Sens are truly turning to the dark side. We're not a dynasty yet, boys. Eric Carlson. Oh, the Captain Carlson. Oh, that one actually has some nice... What did you do with that? Like, faded out or something? That's pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, next up, look what I found in Hammond's closet. Why are you stealing... The hamburglers, ha <laughs> hamburgers there, Curtis Lazar. Get your own, goddammit. Look at the hamburger right here. <laughs> I'll steal hamburgers. Uh, and the number one goalie job as well. Oh, Robin Laner, you hear that? He's coming to steal the job, son. He already made it so that we traded Anderson. Sorry, Harper, it's Superb Man's time. That's right, I'm the GMPM Superb Man. Get out of here, Harper. Uh, <laughs> don't mess with the Hoff. David Hasselhoff from Baywatch. <laughs> That's the Hoff, all right. That's his nickname, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> And last but not least, in Superb Man We Trust. Oh, look at that. The vintage Ottawa Senators logo. That's pretty cool right there. I like that. All right. Very good. Very good. So thank you very much, boys. Back to the simulation now. And look at that. Woo! We're winning some games. 10-6-2. So we went from 4-5-1 to 10-6-2. 
Very nice. That trade might have been just what we needed. And Mark Stone leading our team in goals with nine. Maybe him on the first line is also what we needed, right? So I don't want to go too far with the simulation. We're still going to lose some games here. And remember, it's on automated. So maybe it's because, uh, what's his name? Andrew Hammond is in the net instead of Robin Lehner. We can turn off the automated goalie rotations. It does make the simulation take a little bit longer. But I just wanted to see one month of uh, regular simulation, what happens with our team here. So Andrew Hammond's goaltender stats are going to be much different now, but I want to see penalty kill and the offense. I want to see how we're... There you go. There you go. All right. So 12-9-2. I'd say that's a pretty good record considering we were 4-5-1, and one, right? So we came back. We won some games. We lost some games as well, but uh, we're on a pretty good stretch right here since uh, we made these changes. So if you look at the standings, where are we? We got 26 points. So we're not in a playoff. Well, we all, we are, we're in a wild card position right now. It's still way too early. Alexander Ovechkin is leading the, t uh, the league with uh, goals with 20. Assists, Backstrom with 29. Points, Backstrom and Ovechkin, one and two. Yeah, those guys are going to be filthy together. All right, save percentage. There you go. Carey Price. Carey Price, 95 overall. Carey Price at the top. His goals against average below two. I told you these rosters are dirty. Now you guys are going to pick out everything that's not realistic. All right, so let's take a look at the stats, the team standings. Let's see where we sit. All right, so total points. We are 17th in the NHL, so we're slowly starting to grow. Goals four per game. This is something I want to raise. I look at us as a goal-scoring team, but then again, with those acquisitions of Wingles and Braun, if we can make our goals against a little bit better, maybe we can be an average team in both categories. All right? That's what I mean about the Clark MacArthur. You want to raise this, you need to go out and get like an 86, 87 overall sniper for that first line with Turris and, uh, and Bobby Ryan, right? But I'm not quite ready to do that just yet because Clark MacArthur... Big part of the chemistry here in Ottawa after that big game against the uh, New York Rangers. Goals against per game, 19th in the NHL. So we have to in got to improve both those categories, okay? Uh, power play percentage, 23.9. Fourth in the NHL for power play percentage, so we don't need to touch the power play. That's all Eric Carlson probably getting it done. And penalty kill, what was it, 75.6 uh, or 76.3 or something like that? All I know is 77.3, it's going up. 25th in the NHL, right? So our penalty kill slowly going up. Our home record, 5-3-2. Our away record, 7-6-0. And, oh. and our last 10, 6-4-0, oh, all right? So last 10, one more games than we lost. That's good news. Player stats for the season. Let's see who's doing what for us. I'm willing to bet. I want to see Eric Carlson, actually. Did he come back? And the goaltender situation. So, Kyle Turris, finally. There you go. Maybe Stone on that first line gets these guys going, man. Because Kyle Turris got 21 points and 23 now. Who said that Kyle Turris won't do anything? Almost point per game. Mark Stone, 19 points in 23 games played. Bobby Ryan, 19 points in 23. So, that first line with Turris, Stone, and Ryan seem to be clicking pretty well. And Hoffman is holding down that second line pretty, uh, pretty nicely also. 15 points in 23. MacArthur, 13 in 23. That's fine for a second liner. Zabinijad, 11 and 23. It could be a little bit higher. That's okay, though. Tommy Wingles has got nine. All right. Zach Smith, Legwan, Shaysan, uh, Neil. Curtis Lazar's only got two goals. Maybe Curtis Lazar's not uh, good enough yet to be getting it done in the NHL. Minus two. Wingles is even. All right. So yeah, first line's minus. Okay, okay, okay. So still early on in the season. The stats are kind of all over the place. But there you go, finally. I guarantee you that's why our power play is doing so good. Eric Carlson. 16 points in 23 games played. Weirkoch, and also Weirkoch being moved on that line instead of Mathot. 13 points in 23 games played. I think you guys are right. I should have a two-way defenseman alongside of an offensive defenseman. And then the two uh, defensive defensemen can play alongside of each other. Braun and uh, Mathot. All right, there you go. And good news about Cody Cece and Phillips. They're plus players. Now, goaltenders. All right, so Andrew Hammond. Yeah, look at this, actually. Andrew Hammond, because he's the better overall goaltender, he got the more games played during that month of simulating. But looks like the team knew what they were doing because he's got a lower goals against average with more games played. That's never good for Laner. 9-5-0 uh, for Hammond. Laner is 3-4-1. So after that first month of simulating, he really didn't have a good stretch here in the second month. Save percentage, Andrew Hammond's much better. Robin Laner, 90.42. Hammond, 91.86. And they both have one shutout each. So... The first month went to Robin Lehner. The second month, I think, goes to Andrew Hammond. So I think we should just leave automated goalie rotations off and run with this team for a little bit. But if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Any line changes, let me know. Any future trades, let me know. I don't know exactly what this team needs right now. I think we just need to let the season play out. So for the next video, boys, I don't think we're going to have any trades. 
I think it's just about line changes. If we need any line changes, power play, penalty kill, defense, offense, goaltender, should we have the auto rotations on or off and then have Laner getting more starts or 2 to 1 ratio or 2 to 2 ratio or something like that, right? Just go nuts in the comments, go nuts on the website. We're not going to set up a vote for the next episode because I think I'm just going to run with this team, okay? So the next episode, we'll take it up to the All Star break ish. And we'll see where we're at. And then in that video, that uh, that's going to be the setup for the trade video. Because if we're not a playoff team in year number one, rebuild time, boys. But I got good hopes for the Ottawa Senators. We got a good start to the season. We got a lot of good mid-80 overall players. And I made the team better with the Wingles and Braun trade. Bringing in two 84s and getting out a few players who were lower than 84, right? So two 82s, I think it was. So it made perfect sense. So let me know what you guys think about that trade. Just bust it apart, and I'll see you guys in the next one.